strategy game lovers across the globe. It is Strategy Gaming Dojo, where we find, learn, and play one more turn of the great strategy games. And today we are going to continue on with Gary Grigsby's War in the East. And we have a few things to talk about before we start moving ground troops. And so unlike our War in the Pacific game, where we took 20 turns to set up the game, and even then maybe didn't... <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, that's that's quite a setup. Uh, when we start Operation Barbarossa here, everything is sort of in its place, and then it's all about what we do with it after that, and that's what we're going to start doing today. Today we are going to fo focus on Army Group North and their initial moves, or at least how I play their initial moves. Now that brings up a point uh, that's come up in the comments, and I've been asked otherwise, and they said, uh, you didn't kabuki dance uh, with the Air Force, with the Luftwaffe. Um, that is true. I did not. Uh, and what does that mean? You may be saying, huh? What are you talking about? Uh, did I get the wrong channel? No, you did not. Uh, there is a method. Hey, David, what's going on? David J. Russ in the house. Um, there is a method of dealing with your air force on turn one, and then that can continue on later in the game. Uh, called the Kabuki Dance. And what is the Kabuki Dance? I don't know who coined that term. Uh, it's just kind of a funny term for how some expert Axis players decide to, to operate with their Air Force. Uh, I'll say off the top, I, I have no criticism for anyone that wants to do that. It's actually quite brilliant who figured it out. I find it gamey, and I don't do it. Uh, not on turn one. Um, I find it gamey against the AI, especially. Now, if you're playing another human player and, you know, you're playing your buddy and all you want to do is win and that's all you care about, you know, look, do it, do whatever. I'm just saying when you play the AI, it's, to me, it feels really gamey. And so I don't do it. As a matter of fact, I'll, I'll also just say generally, I find that the air loss count on turn one is maybe the most overrated uh, stat or thing that you see. People talk about, wow, I, I took out 5,000 planes. I took out, you know, 6,000 Soviet aircraft. Um, say Janosh, hello, sir. Uh, but people will, you know, talk about these incredible numbers they rack up and whatnot. Ultimately, I can tell you, if I had to list the top 100 important things that you do in this game, the number of Soviet aircraft that you knock out on turn one would rank not in the top 50. Let's put it that way. Uh, a lot of those aircraft are obsolete. A lot of them you will uh, eventually destroy anyway, whether it be your ground forces uh, displacing the air bases, which causes air losses, or because... Uh, the Soviet player tries to interdict with their very poor early war planes. And uh, when you're doing ground support, and they so you blow up the Soviet planes that way, eventually the difference uh, between us, I think we ended up with 3,000 or 3,100, which isn't, you know, great. It's not bad. It's, you know, I probably would have rather had around 3,500 or 4,000. Um, you know, I have done the Kabuki method before and gotten 50, 500, although the, they have nerfed that a little bit, I will say, but be that as it may, in the grand scheme of things, it is just not that important. That's why I didn't spend days going over every squadron that we moved to the air base. And just to tell you, if, if you really, um, uh, you know, want to know what the Kabuki dance is, how it operates. There are great threads on the Max on the Matrix forums that go through that. Essentially, what you're doing, uh, since everything is based on air miles, you're taking squadrons from. You know, I'm just picking this one. It could be this one, or you know, any of these backlying air bases, and you're moving them forward to these air bases. One reason is is that when you transfer air bases. It's a quirk of the game. It doesn't charge you the full amount of air miles, okay? And so instead of this being, you know, how many ever hexes? Seven or eight hexes, 70 or 80 air miles. Instead of that, it just says air miles 1% have been flown. And so that's why I find it a little gamey. I also find it a little gamey because, you know, this is how 
Axis forces were set up on turn one. Now we can say, why in the world did they have an airbase back here? Well, there were actually good reasons for it. I mean, you know, we know historically how ill prepared the Soviets were. And of course, the Germans, the Axis, knew that to some extent. But they had to be worried and prepared. I don't know. The, the Soviets could have flown some mission here to Bromberg and tried to bomb it. So, that, I mean, they had to keep some stuff a little further back. That's why people say, well, why is the, you know, Second Army back here? Well, because, again, you know, we know what happened on June 22nd. Um, but ultimately the Germans had to hold a little bit back in reserve. So taking all of your aircraft and moving them to forward air bases and doing that to extend your range and allow you to kill another, or I say kill, uh, destroy another, you know, thousand Soviet aircraft that aren't going to make a difference anyway, just doesn't seem worth it to me. But that's me. That's me. And I'm not criticizing anybody that does that. Uh, play the game however you want. It's, you know, it's supposed to be fun. I will also say, you know, I try, try generally in all the games I play on the channel. <laughs> you may say on the channel, so when you're just playing at home, you just want to win, right? But on the channel, I try not to do what I consider gamey type things um, because, you know, we're playing the AI here ultimately. Uh, maybe, well, hey, I've got that challenge series going with Field of Glory 2 Medieval right now. We may get gamey as hell if I think one of those guys is going to beat me. So we'll see We'll see how much I stick to that. Um, another thing I wanted to mention is, is I did uh, make sure, now I've lowered our video feed down to 720p. I've been told uh, by numerous people that no reason to go 1080p uh, playing the games that we do strategy you know we're not playing first person shooters hopefully uh, that means that the video you know the 720p should look about the same to you especially for a game like this and hopefully uh, that causes uh, any lag problems that some of you have had or just video dropping problems to go away so hopefully we've done that uh p warner's here how's it going p warner yeah let's burn up some of those i-15 soviet planes uh, that's gonna win us the war you know like i said i mean look of course you know we're getting free shots here on turn one we're gonna try to take out what we can uh but really it's you know whether you destroy 3500 or you know 3800 soviet planes uh that's not what's going to win this game uh, ultimately how you move your panzers is what wins you or loses you this game period i mean there's just really nothing how you manage supply to your panzers and how you move them uh, and i say supply it's actually fuel but how you move fuel out to your panzers and uh you know get things pocketed with your panzers so that you get surrenders that's it that's you know that's like 1A and everything else is like, you know, you know, 11 and down. Uh, so that's what we're really going to focus on. Um, so a few things that we need just kind of housekeeping that we need to do before we get into moving ground units is we do need to go back here to our general's report. We need to go to air groups. We need to hit none. We need to go to fighter bombers. And unfortunately, we need to, I, I was going to just do this offline, but hey, well, you know, why not? Let's do it. Uh, we got Keith B here. We got Shaky. All right. We got the crew here. Uh, evidently, Bayard doesn't play war in the East. He's just a war in the Pacific guy. Uh, maybe that's why he knows the exact, uh, you know, man count on, <laughs> on every unit. Uh, okay, so let's go through these fighter bombers, and we'll change them all back to fighters, Okay. Uh, unfortunately, this, I don't know why we don't have a back button. We have to keep doing this. Uh, what did I start with? Let's just make sure. Okay, fighter. We started at the top. I just wanted to make sure. Let's change these back really quickly. I was going to do it offline, and then I don't want you guys to think well, I'm messing around with the game offline, and you're like, wait a minute, how did that happen? What's this guy up to? Um, let's change these all back to fighters. Because they are all trained as fighters. Now we will get some fighter bombers uh, that are better as bombers or they have been trained that way and we will leave those as bombers. Uh, there's really no reason uh, not to. Uh, but these guys have been trained as fighters. Ultimately, you know, really after turn one, you're more interested in having fighters uh, because, 
you're going to be doing some interdiction stuff and whatnot. So we'll change all these back. Uh, as someone pointed out in the comments last time, there was absolutely no reason for me to change over some of these Hungarian uh, squadrons. Uh, or Italian squadrons. They were too far back to do anything on turn one. Uh, that was another case of I'm talking to you guys while doing this and not really thinking about what I'm doing sometimes. Uh, okay, let's see. We're almost there. I think, what, three more units to go here? These damn Italians back here with their their beautiful... Uh, I, again, I don't even... It's like cow spotting uh, that they've got on those planes. Let's see. Right, fighter, fighter. Then we're gonna go look at our fighter. All right, I think that's all of them. Uh, I'll go check them later just in case. We want to look at this now. Percent required to fly. We want to crank this. Whoops. Let's crank this back up to 50. Uh, I like to leave it at 50. Yeah, P. Warner. Uh, that's why, you know, I'm going to run it with 780p and, uh, you know, hopefully, I mean, really, you guys should not be able to tell the difference uh, depending on what you're running between 780p and 1080 or 720, sorry, 720 and 1080. Um, ground support, ground support escort. I like to turn the escort down to about 60 um, and I do like to have, early in the game anyway, ground support up to a, about 80. Um, ground attack, we want to have this. Ground support on, recon escort off. Uh, ground attack, oh, that's fine. Um, let's get out of there. Come back. Uh, fighter intercept, some of these we can't move. Uh, this turn, and that's uh, because we've already flown so many missions. Um, fighter intercept, non-fighter, okay, we're just going to leave all these the same. Next turn, we'll come back and dial back, you know, airfield attack, uh, and we'll kind of get these all optimized. I generally do like 80-60 for almost all of these. Um, you know, as, as the axis, as time goes on, you really do not have a good... Uh, you know, you lose air superiority fairly quickly. You know, I would say after like the first 10 turns. Here, let's brighten that up. Gosh, that got dark. Things got dark. Okay, so now we're up here. We're ready for ground units. Um, and we're ready for our initial moves. Now, just some very basics uh, that I think if you stick by these rules, you'll be ahead of 70 or 80 percent of the people that play this game the first 10 times okay and that is always move from the back to the front to the extent you can always move uh you know units like this first and get them up here to do some dirty work on the front line hopefully blow them out and then you can use your units that still have a lot of movement points to then move further you see what I mean? So instead of attacking with these guys right here, why not bring these guys up here, attack, and then you've got freedom of movement with these guys with 16 points. And so I see a lot of people start off and they click here and they immediately, you know, attack with this guy. Um, but, you know, now you're, you're eating up movement points for these uh, units, you move these units up and they can't go any further. And now all of a sudden you've got this big log jam, you know, right in here. Uh, and so this unit back here, this is the infamous Policia, uh, which at one time, I'm not going to say who did it, maybe referred to them as Polish instead of police, which set off a firestorm on the channel, as you may <laughs> remember. Policia, yes, SSS SSS, SS Polizia, the police, the SS police. I bet you these were a nasty bunch of individuals, uh, indeed. Um, so this headquarters, now let's get our shift Z on here. I always like the full shift Z so I can see who is commanding this headquarters. It is indeed part of the 18th army. We could have seen that over here as well. Um, and then, you know, you can look and see what units are here, what unit, what headquarters are on the same level will be lit up in yellow. Um, okay, so back 
to front. Always try to do that. Always try to move by rail if you can, okay? And so, uh, for instance, this guy could move up here and have two movement points left. Well, okay. Or we could move them by rail, and by the time they get here, I think they end up, now it says 59 because it's showing you the number of strategic move points it has left, but I think this will only reduce its actual movement points by like four. It will still have 12 left when it gets up here. You take it off the train, which then costs points, uh, but you still have like eight, I think eight points, movement points left. We'll, well, we're going to see in a minute. Let's put it that way. Um, and so try to move things by rail if you can. Try to move things from back to front. Try to, at the very start here, let's get back to move so I can get back up here. At the very start here, let's look for the weakest Soviet units. And now keep in mind, on turn one, you're only paying half of your movement points for attacks. And so, you know, normally it would cost two to do a hasty attack here, let's say. In turn one, it costs one. Normally, it would cost six to do a deliberate attack. In turn one, it costs three. And one mistake that I see people make, um, I call it a mistake, but I think it's being, it's trying to do the right thing, but it causes you to maybe be overly cautious, is I see a lot of people say, well, I know that I read I'm supposed to form pockets. I'm supposed to get things to surrender. And that is true. Okay, but in turn one, you have such an advantage. So as I said, movement points are halved, uh, so you can pretty much move twice as much. Uh, and combat, your attack values are essentially doubled. And so you have such a tremendous advantage on turn one that you should not leave any units with any movement points or attacks unattacked. Go after the Soviets and try to blast his way, blast away at as much as you can while still keeping the ultimate goals in mind. Now, our ultimate goal here, uh, oh, and I will say the very last general rule, always move your infantry before you move your panzers uh, or your motorized unit units. Always have the infantry create the gaps and then move your panzers through it. Uh, because one thing to keep in mind when it comes to movement points, as, okay, let me click on this. As we start to take territory up here, it will start to turn gray, okay? And we're gonna try to build a tunnel through here that our panzers can go flying through. Now remember, if one of these are red, it means they're still under Soviet zone of control it costs us more movement points to move through those hexes because the Soviets have a zone of control over them. So what you need to do with your infantry is take these, turn them gray so that we have a zone of control and our panzers can go through here with the lowest number of movement points possible because you want those panzers flying, all right? So we're going to try to get our panzers over the river, over the Dagava here. Now we don't necessarily want to, I say want to, of course we want to take this town, but we're not necessarily going to attack it. I have just of the mind, I never attack urban areas with uh, motorized units. Uh, there's too big of a penalty. You only have so many panzers. There's no reason to waste even three or four of them on a place that you're going to take later, or more importantly, the Soviets are gonna drop back anyway and you can just walk into. So why, why give up any tanks, any motorized units if you don't have to? So the, our Southern Panzer Pincher, we're gonna to try to get over the river to this hex here. We will have another motorized unit that we try to put here. Uh, sometimes I put it here, but I'll tell you why I'm not going to. We're going to try to put it here. We're going to try to put a motorized unit here. And then we're going to have two panzer divisions, one here and one here. Now that's the ultimate goal, and I'll show you how to do that. Um, something would have to go terribly wrong for that not to be the case. Uh, but, one, you know, you should have 
almost all of your panzers across the Dagava on turn one. And then in turn two, we'll start talking about Peskov. Uh, but how are we going to do that? Um, oh gosh, there was one other thing I wanted to mention. Oh, 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 the reason, and it brings up a larger point that I wanted to talk to you about, is the reason that I will not have the motorized unit here and instead we'll park it here, even though it could have gone quite, and you'll see, it really could go quite a bit further. The reason is, is what you need to look at for these pockets that we'll try, be trying to create to trap Soviet units and have them surrender. Now, once they're trapped, what happens is they are out of supply and they immediately become isolated. Once they become isolated, they essentially have no combat ability left uh, and they are much, much more likely to surrender uh, because they see, hey, you know, they look all around, there's Germans everywhere. Uh, they just throw up their hands. Uh, and that's what we're going to try to do. Now, there's two things you got to think about. One is, could the Soviet unit, even with um, you getting control of, let's say, this hex, this hex, this hex, could that Soviet unit, with the movement points it has, move across your zones of control and get out of that box? And the second thing is, does it have any railway escape? And that's why I'm going to be putting a unit here, because if you look at the railways and how Soviet units would try to get out of this situation, if they could. Now, remember, the railways and this is kind of abstracted, right? Uh, it doesn't have to have a train sitting here. We don't have a train icon. Essentially, if they can get on a piece of rail, they can get out on the rail. And so let's say that we moved a motorized unit here but we did not control this node here. The Soviets could could try to get this, you know, tank. These are you know, motorized of some sort tank. They could, should, could try to get it down here and get a zone of control on this node. They could then try to get all of their units here and throw them on a railway down this way and get them out. And that's what you want to avoid because they can reconstitute these units, they can rebuild them, they can refit them. And so you want to either shatter them and destroy them or have them surrender. You don't want them to get out. So be very cognizant of where these rail lines are, where they could get out. And with that, I think I said everything. Uh, one last thing that's kind of a uh, uh, just a pointer is... I said the most important thing in this game is how you move your panzers. I was somewhat correct. Uh, mechanically, the most important thing you can do every time you click on a stack of units is look over here and make sure that just the ones you want to move are highlighted. I cannot tell you the number of times when you first start out that you'll click over here on this stack and you'll say, oh great, I want this infantry unit to attack. You'll hit attack and you'll be like, no! I also told my panzers to attack. Just always go over here to the pain every single time and make sure that you are only selecting the units that you really, really want to move or attack with, okay? All right, so what's our first move going to be? Well, we're in move mode here. Who gets the... Uh, who gets the honor of doing the initial attack? And I always give that to 1st Infantry Division, 1 Corps. Okay. So what am I going to do first here? The first thing I'm going to do is look at these weak fortified units here, or the weaker security. These are actually regiments. They're not even divisions. You can see with the three. And we're going to try to blow those out with infantry hasty attacks, okay? Because in turn one, it's only gonna cost us one point to make that hasty attack. The only one where that is not the case is this security unit, because I think it it's on the rail line that you're, you know, it is on a rail line. I think it's so important to route this immediately that I do do a hasty attack with first infantry division, one core. And I give them the honors. So, oh, and I, you're, you may be saying, hey, I thought you told us to move things from the back to the front. I did. 
and we're going to do these guys next. The reason I do this attack first is because right now, if we railed these guys up here, they have to stop right here. Why is that? It, because no unit will proceed by rail into a hex next to an enemy unit. So right now, if we rail them, they stop here. Once we do this attack and, we, and this unit displaces out of here, now we can rail them to here. And that allows them to cross a river by rail. It saves us a lot of movement points, okay? So 1st Infantry Division, 1 Corps, we've got it selected. We could probably move this with a hasty attack, but we're going to actually press shift, and with just this one infantry, we are going... Oh, no, we don't want that. Get out, get out, get out, get out. <laughs> Did you see what happened? I, I, I rolled over... A bunch of other things there, and it started to set up a big, big deliberate attack. Um, okay, so 1st Infantry Division, 1 Corps, deliberate attack, and Operation Barbarossa has begun. And what did we do here? We're going to pause this for a second. Uh, we had 19,000 men coming in. Uh, this just 1442. I mean, we've got them outnumbered, what, you know, 15 to 1, essentially. Um damage lost men whatever we had four men damaged hey come on the look at the odds 41 59 to 5 so we should have blown these guys out and indeed we did we routed them out and they have displaced right back here this is good because what we want to do is displace everything into kind of a little you know, pocket here and that's all, all of these troops we should get to surrender if we do this correctly okay all right. Uh, one second, one second, gentlemen. Just want to look at uh, any chat we've got going on here. Um, all right. So we've displaced them. Great. And that is our first move. Now we're going to actually move these guys. Now, another thing to keep in mind, uh, I keep telling you all of these general rules, but another general rule is when you do move a unit, the first thing you need to think about once it lands wherever you wanted it to go, the first thing you need to think about is where is its headquarters unit? Because something else that will happen to you often, uh, and it still happens to me from time to time, I'm not going to sit here and say it never happens. Uh, it should happen less and less as you play the game more because you'll get so pissed off about it, is, is you will move this unit up here and you'll be so excited to do your attack that you'll forget it is... You know, as it's moved, it's gotten out of command range, and it will not have any support units. Remember, for th for this core headquarters to give this support units, it's got to be within five uh, hexes, essentially. Okay, and so just always keep that in mind when you move your unit. Sit there and think for a second. Okay, do I have the units selected? I actually want to move, and where is this unit's headquarters? And always then move the headquarters within five. Now, maybe it does not want to give the division any uh, support units. Okay, that's uh, we, we're leaving that to our, our core headquarters, but you at least want to have the option or let the core headquarters have the option. Okay, all right, so let's switch over to rail here, and we'll bring the one that's the furthest back here, which is the 86th Infantry Division. We're going to rail it, right up here is this where we want it yes this is where we want it all right make sure that's the only one we have selected we'll right click and off it goes on a gorgeous german train i'm sure all right now you'll kind of see what I was talking about. Now that we're here, let's just say the whole reason I did that was to make an attack. I may get really excited and do the attack and forget I've got all of these other things selected. We want to deselect these guys. Okay, these are the ones that were already there. This is our unit. You see here on train. Let's take it off the train. Now, what's the next thing we're going to do? Well, we got to look for its headquarters. And, you know, we're moving both of these units up. Now, this is where you have a little bit of a decision to make because now, remember, we've got the triple stacking rule. Uh, you cannot stack more than three units here. And so this is now blocked 
uh, by this guy. Um, and so what are we going to do here? Um, well, it's a good question. Let's think about it for a minute. Oh, by the way, when we took this off the train, now it's it's still got six movement points, okay? Uh, that's pretty good. Well, here's what I'm actually going to do, and I think is the best move, is this unit is blocking a lot. Now, I would like to attack this unit with this unit we just moved up here with the, the low number of... Um, with the low number of points, you know, because it's only got six left now, I would like to attack one of these fortified units with it that we brought it from the back, it's up here. So how are we gonna do that though? Because now we have triple stack here, we have triple stack here. I could bring it up to here, but it's going to waste points. So we gotta think a little bit about the most efficient way to do that. So now I've clicked on these units right here. I'm in move mode. Now, of course, we do not want to attack with the panzers. Now remember, this 269th Infantry Division was originally with these panzers. It was in the Panzer Corps, but I moved it over to the One Corps, okay? Uh, and so its commander is right here. The commander is modal. Great. We always want to be attacking with modal. Now this is a nine defensive unit though, right? So I'm going to do two things. And this unit down here uh, is going to, I don't want to say not follow our rule, but we we are going to attack with it before we bring things from the back. Okay, so we've only got it selected. We do not have the panzer selected. Let's do a hasty attack on this fortified unit to start with. That'll only cost us one point. We are within command range, and as you see, we just absolutely blow these guys out. 18 to 1. Uh, they lost 1,647 men, and that unit is no more. Now, with this unit, then, we are also going to do a deliberate attack on these guys. All right? And you can start to see where we're forming our tunnel here. And it's always, in my estimation, the best way to do it is always on railways. I always try to make sure because you want your panzers to end up on railways. Now, after turn one, it's not the most important thing in the world. Uh, and you'll see after we move everything else, all of this is going to be blown away and all that will be left are units right in here. But let's do a deliberate attack right here. Let's do a deliberate attack right here there we go all right 2644 to 255 a huge advantage um 10 to 1 okay great uh, uh initially though we lost 123 men that's not great for us i wish we could unpause this when i pause it you can't unpause it best i can tell you just have to exit well that unit is no more it has uh it has flown away uh and so we have you know peppered that unit and now we can start moving forward a little bit here um first of all with the unit that is not used or has used a bigger portion of its movement points the one we brought from the back and we are going to put it well yep okay let's put it right there so make sure it's the only one we're moving. Okay. Now its headquarters is still back here, but we have not attacked with it. So we're fine. Let's go over to railway here. And now let's bring this guy up. Okay. We couldn't bring him here before because this unit was stacked here, three strong. Uh, so we couldn't bring it there. Now let's bring him there. We're going to click off these other guys and we're going to take him off the train. And so now we still have six movement points left. And now we're going to rail the, well, actually we're not. We're going to go to movement mode now. We're going to find this guy, click off the other guys, and we're going to move him right here, okay? So we brought these guys from the back, and, you know, normally I, I see some people play, and they don't even get these guys in the action on the first turn, uh, because... You know, they're like, well, they're way back here. They let the other guys move, and then they just bring them here. I mean, you might as well use them when they've got a huge, tremendous uh, combat advantage on turn one. Now we're going to bring 
their headquarters up here. Uh, and as you can see, I keep bringing them all to this hex. Why is that? Well, it's the furthest one forward we can get to. It's also um, across the river. So we get them across the river and they don't have to expend movement points getting across the river, which can be expensive. Now, one thing you want to make sure and do, uh, this is another one of those uh, kind of general tips, is this. You... Uh, do not want to have a triple stack anywhere near your railroad unit. So here's our railroad unit. Why is that? Well, because the railroad unit can't move up here. You know, it, the railroad unit wants to get moving, uh, but if you have a triple stack, it gets blocked if it needed to get this way. Now, we're actually going to take the railroad unit up here. We'll get to that. All right. Um, all right. So we still have points left with these guys, and it's perfect. We have three points and we have four points. And why do I say that's perfect? Well, because these guys can still do deliberate attacks. On turn two, they would not be able to because you need six points, movement points. But here on turn one, we're using the advantage. And they, they are better than just fortified units. And so I would not want to do a hasty attack on them anyway. Uh, let's shift, right click, and bam, we take these guys out. Adios, okay. He drops back one. That's fine. We'll take him out soon enough. Uh, now, remember, we've got our headquarter unit here, so that did add support units. Now we're going to take this guy, shift, and blow these guys out. We did a deliberate attack. We had four, so we spent three, and we now blow these guys back. All right. They took 713 to our 76 lost. 10 to 1. That's what you're looking for. 10 to 1. 10 to 1. Uh, as long as you do that, you will be in very good shape. Um, all right. So what do we have here? Let's now take the headquarters unit for these two units. Put them. Make sure that the headquarters is on the railway. And I kind of like to stack them with one of the units it's with. Uh, and so now all of these guys are together, and we've moved them. They've done the most they can do. We got them into the attack, and they're moving forward. But most importantly, they push things around so that now we can start to operate with these units that have all of these movement points. Okay? Now then, where next? Well, we have this fortified unit here. Uh, some people, like, you know, attack this way. There's a river here. If we scoot really in close in here, you would be attacking across the river. So what I do is I take one of these, you know, just pick the, it doesn't really matter. They're essentially identical. Um, we're going to do a hasty attack and destroy that. And that should just disintegrate. Yep, it's gone. Okay. Now... What are we going to do? Well, you have a little bit of a choice to make here because you do need to get rid of this unit. Um, you also want one of these guys to go up here, go across back and across the river to help take care of these two guys. What I generally do uh, first is take this guy, make sure he's the only one selected, and we do a hasty attack there. You know that That's basically a non-unit. <laughs> I mean, that's... Uh, but you're just just wiping out. Well, he routed. Not the worst thing in the world. We'll get him moved where we want him. Um, and then you have this one and seven. Okay. We need to get rid of this unit. We want him to, you know, if he only routes back over here, that's fine. It's not the end of the world. Let's uh, do a deliberate attack here because he is over a one or a two. That's just kind of my general rule. So let's deliberately attack here. 2100 to 85. He probably will only route though. Yep, he routed out. That's good. Lost 1,677 men. We lost 26. All right. And so now we're starting to get these guys congregating in here. And this is where you're going to start building your pocket. Now, I would have preferred for him to route down here. Uh, that did not happen, unfortunately. Uh, but that's okay. That's okay. Um, so now we could move him. Or we could take one of these guys, which is what we're actually going to do, and we're going to move him here, make sure he's the only one we're moving, and now we're going to do a deliberate attack on this guy. we got to get him out of the way. 
All right, well, he only moved back. Now, I hate when that happens. Um, let's see. If we moved him here, that's 11. If we moved him here, that's 7. That's not ideal. But I think what we'll do is this. We'll move him. Well, I don't want him to move across the river, really. This would still be 8. But I want him. He needs to move up this way. Uh, and as a matter of fact, we're going to start moving him this way. We're going to move him across the river. Uh, I think we can get away with a hasty attack here. Uh, if nothing else, we're just pushing them back for other things. As you can see, we're starting to take these hexes. My general rule is you want three across. That keeps the Soviets from coming across a zone of control, as if you have three, you make it impossible, really, for them to get out of that situation. I think we're going to route this guy this time, and we did. Okay, perfect. Um, now we need to start moving this headquarters forward a little bit. We'll move him here. We just don't want to forget to move him. Uh, and so we'll put him here. And now we've got this other division that is part of this group. Uh, what we want to do, though, always move these guys first because they are establishing the zone of control. So I'm going to move him right up the railway. Now you see we displace this routed unit right up the railway. Okay, now we could go here and attack both of them with a hasty attack, uh, which is what I think I'm going to do. Now, I like to keep everything on the railway generally, but in this case, we're just going to move him over here. Now, you'll see he's still within four of five, and so this headquarters unit can still give him support units. And so we're going to hit this security unit and try to destroy it. 218 to 1 odds, that should destroy. Well, he routed out, okay. And now we're also, if we can, yep, we can, we're also going to hit these units. Now, they're a little bit heavier than I would generally like to hit with a hasty attack, but we've only got one point left, and we're going to use every single dang point that we can to attack in turn one. Now we barely had them by two to one odds, two eighteen to one, so we do lose 147 men, but they lost 3,000 plus 148 guns. We'll always take those kind of odds. Now then, where are we going here? Let's, uh, I, you know, I usually, this is kind of starting to develop a little differently than it does for me sometimes. Um, really, the best move for this guy is to keep him going this way, um, and I think I'll do that. Now, he captures one ton of supply and zero tons of fuel. That's what happens when you start to make these things displace. And what do I mean by displace? Well, when something is routed, um, when something is routed like that, it's going to keep, you know, scurrying away from you as you advance, and they will leave fuel and supplies behind, all right? So we're just gonna keep advancing with him as long as we can. He's here, he's still in command range. As long as he can attack, let's keep attacking. Now they have uh, brought in an anti-tank group, okay. Now we had uh, approximately three to one odds here, not great for turn one, but look, we routed a division, we took out 2,500 men, uh, that's a good attack. All right, so now we're going to take this guy. Now, this uh, core here is really the core that you want going north. This was just kind of an opportunity that I took. Uh, these guys are getting pushed further east uh, than I'm used to them being. You know, usually they're still right here in this pocket, but that's okay because we've got a bunch of routed units here. We are going to push this way and up and around them with other units down here. Everything's looking really good. So now this unit, we want to bring up here to the north. Uh, want to try to keep on railway to the extent we can. So we're going to move him right there. Make sure that's the only one we're moving. And we see we routed out that unit. And you can see our zone of control continuing to expand. Um, perfect. Now we want this guy to be on this railway so these guys cannot get away down this railway okay uh, as you see the railway here stops right here it does not connect so the only way for these guys to get out by rail would be right here so we're gonna just move right there and call that a turn for that unit 
Now, is he? Yep, he's within five of five. This guy is within four of five. This guy is within three of five. And we've got the forming here of a nice little pocket. And as you, you know, we're starting the pocket, our motorized units will complete the pocket to the north. But also we've got a huge corridor here for our panzers to start running through. We've already established all of this territory as our zone of control. So they will not be spending too many uh, points there. Now, remember, we have already moved these guys, but heck, we still got a lot more. I mean, we still got a lot more here of the 18th Army. All right. So here's the main headquarters of the 18th Army. Uh, one thing I didn't do that I probably should do here before I forget is I always like to move Army Group North up here a little further up. Uh, I always put it up here on the railway unit for the most part. Um, on turn one. Now, the reason you want Army Group North, the uh, the Army Group headquarters moving here, is because you want all of the construction units that are attached to that to get out here and start repairing rail as soon as possible. Now, that's the what I call like secondary rail repair. You don't really have control over it for the most part. I mean, it's it's done by the AI. Uh, and so, you know, the really the only control you have is getting Army Group North up here and moving. Uh, and so we moved it by rail, as you saw. Now, another thing we're going to do while we're here is click off that and move our railroad unit to here by rail. Now, we could come up this way, but I'm going to try to pocket these troops. So instead, I'm going to go this way. Uh, with my rail. You can do either. Uh, essentially, all you're trying to do is get to this hex. It could either be from here or it could be from here, and then you're going to rego with it. Uh, this time, I'm just going to bring it up here. Make sure it's only your rail railroad unit that's up here. Great. Uh, oh, you know what? Actually, I am going to move Army Group North up there to this node as well. It's still within... Um, the kind of starting boundary, uh, but it's the, you know, kind of the closest to rail that could actually be repaired as you can get. And so let's put that right up here as well. Make sure that's the only thing we have selected. Okay. Now we're going to take both of them off the train. Oh, it takes 15. Okay. Uh, for a headquarters, it's going to take 15 points. That's fine. It doesn't matter. Uh, we'll get it off there next time. Um, and now let's take that off. And let's start moving our rail unit. Let's start moving our rail unit. Um, right. We still have eight movement points. Let me move it. Hold on. Hmm. It's still showing that on the train. Right. But he's not on the train. So let me move him. It's not letting me move. Oh, can your railroad unit not go in there? Uh, I'm going to have to think about that one. Okay, we'll come back to that in a second. Now, let's get back to these guys. Uh, here we have the 38th Corps under Von Chapuy. Now, we know Von Chapuy only has this one unit here. I'm essentially just going to try to move him up here as far as we can. So, these guys are both here. Uh, we could, oh, I see, gosh darn it, I hate when I do this, this is what I said in the basic tutorial, you've got to make sure you're on move mode, I, anytime it says you can't move, go make sure you're not on move mode, okay, here we go, uh, so we're only moving the railroad unit, all right, cool, we're going to move it there, excellent, let's make sure we click off that first, and repair with one rail, there we go, now we're in the Baltic rail zone, so it only costs one point, there we go. We're going to start building this rail line. You could also go up this way if you wanted to. Um, I generally go one of these two ways. I know people have given a lot of thought to it. I don't think it matters that much which one of these two you go to. Um, okay, cool, cool. Can I take him off the train now? No, it's going to be 15 strategic. Oh, okay, okay. That's because we brought him from so far back. 
Okay, so we've got Army Group North there. We've moved our rail. We've started to repair the rail, which, you know, is so important. Now let's go back to Von Chapuy. Von Chapuy is right here. This is his 58th Division. It's the only group. Um, let's see how much it's going to cost to move them here. It costs five points. <clears throat> I actually think that's going to be cheaper. Um, and we are going to... Actually, let's go put Von Chapuy here or here. Let's put Von Chapuy here. Well, his his division here. Now he's going to move up there with them. Uh, really, actually, it's not a good it's not a good move to have Jean uh, Von Chapuy that far forward. No reason to do that. Let's undo that. All right. Let's actually have Von Chapuy actually go right here okay so now it's within five we're also right next to with the railhead um perfect okay so five that's great that is where von chapuis unit shall go and now who do we have next we have the 11th infantry division underneath the one core and so the one core we have more of those guys over here. Now, don't forget, you've got your panzers on this side of the river, uh, which is kind of interesting. We got to we got to make sure we remember that. Now, this is that unit that did those hasty attacks, and we got to think about exactly what we want to do with them next. I think we're going to bring and make sure you only got them selected. I think we're going to bring them right up here, so they're not attacking out of a swamp. They are now in clear. Perfect. They still have eight points left. You've got a four unit and you've got a three unit. We've got eight points left. And quite honestly, I mean, it couldn't go much further anyway. So why don't we try to do a deliberate attack? Let's do this unit first. Okay, they're in light woods. Or this is clear, right? Clear. Okay, let's actually hit this one first. That'll cost us three. You see, we got a lot of support units in here, 65 to 1 odds. And, okay, that's fine. It it went up here. It got into kind of our pocket. I would have rather that it, you know, completely routed, but we'll route it here in a moment. And now let's deliberately attack this unit. And hopefully this will route. These are all dice rolls. Really. Oh, ugh. That's not what we wanted. Okay, well, what are we going to do here? That's zero, that's zero, that's zero. He can't really go much further. We will keep him on the rail. He'll be five of five from his headquarters. He's going to sit right here. And if we do decide this is exactly how we're going to pocket, um, you know, he's the bulwark here where we've got them trapped. It closes this whole pocket. Um, now let's look at these other units that are part of his group. Now this one only has 13 left, so why don't we move them first? That would be six left if we go in there, six, seven. Uh, this could kind of be our southern one. I'm actually surprised, it's only seven to there, huh? All right, we're gonna move them here, and we are again going to attack this time, we're just going to do a hasty attack and see what happens. Okay, we did route it out that time. Good. I was like, goodness, Lord. Um, all right, we need to get this headquarters moving forward. For now, let's put the headquarters right there, stacked with the unit. Okay, and then it's still we still got these two guys back here. Uh, we could hasty attack there. Now we cannot move, it's not allowing us to move right there because I think it's still in this zone of control even though it shows it's our zone of control. Um, hmm, interesting. Now we could do something a little fancy here and that is to hasty attack these guys. Now it is across a river, but you've got a huge advantage here um, and it would knock down the zone of control and maybe allow us to get, well, how do we want to do this? I think I'm actually going to... All right, let's move him up here. 
and let's do a hasty attack and try to get rid of this guy. Uh, he's annoying me. He should have routed out, but he did not. Uh, okay, they routed this time, or he retreated. Uh, my, my bad, he retreated. But we still have these two units here, the 11th Infantry Division, and let's bring them... We could either bring them down here or up here. That's five. Okay, we still have eight left if we're there. Let's bring him around this way to there. And let's just hasty attack because I really don't want to use up that many more movement points. And I think maybe we, yeah, they didn't have much left. 2493 to one. That knocks them out. Okay, now that we have the zone of control, can we move him forward? No, we need, we need to go one more. Let's move him here. And this is an armored unit. We have five movement points left with him. Let's go ahead and... Yep, let's deliberately attack there. 4621 to 83. And we've routed that unit. They lost 64 armored fighting vehicles. That's excellent. We still have two points left. Let's hit these guys with a hasty attack. And we're just routing all of these guys out now, as you see. Uh, great. Can you move here? No. Can he move here? No. Nobody else here can move. Great. All on zero. Uh, and we're getting them all into this little pocket here. Now, the last one we need to think about is this group that's still on this side of this river. And we will go right here with them. And you know what? Let's just hit them with a hasty attack and see what the odds are. I mean, it was five to one. Okay, we routed a bunch of them out. And now, as you see, we've really got a nice little pocket formed here. We're going to get them across this river. Ooh, we could displace up here, though. That's kind of nice, too. Uh, but let's get them across this river, and they can still do another hasty attack. And I think we can route all of these. Yep, we routed all of them out. Excellent. Uh, and so as you see, this is what you want to see. R, R, R. Now, the real important thing now is to actually form that pocket where they can't get out. And you can see one prong of it is forming, going to be forming here. The other prong of it is going to be forming there. Well, unfortunately, gosh, that had a lot going on. Oh, David asks, is there any way to make units route or retreat in a certain direction? No, uh, not really. Uh, they will. There are rules that you can read about exactly how they try to retreat or how they displace. Uh, it, you know, without going through this whole algorithm, that the game has uh, the basic rules are they're going to try to go to where they still have a rail link uh, they're going to try to go towards friendly zones of control um, and all of those are weighted different ways uh, essentially they're going to try to go to safety you know so if you have like a big red patch here um, and everything else is gray or green you know they're going to try to go to that red patch but other than that, now some people have figured out exactly how those rules work and they will use it to their advantage. They know exactly where it's going to retreat into. Um, I just don't spend that kind of time. We can still win the game and not have to do that. So I just don't do that. Um, I have to say, very pleased with how we've started with the 18th Army here. Uh, we've got this rail line covered, this rail line covered. Uh, you know, you can never really get to this rail line with infantry on turn one. That's good. We are now across the du Dubisa, Dubisa, Dubsa. I don't know. Uh, we're across that. We have routed damn near everything over here. Um, and now soon we will get the armor rolling here. Uh, we've got our panzers laying in wait. Von Monstein. And, and company. Hepner leads the 4th Panzer Group, but we've got uh, Von Monstein and we've got uh, Reinhardt. Reinhardt is also very good. Reinhardt will be going north to Riga. Von Monstein will be going south and trying to get across the Dogava. Here, 
here. But first, when we come back next time uh, on Thursday, we're going to be moving the 16th Army down here. And the 16th, what is the 16th goals? Well, first of all, we're going to get rid of these, you know, crappy little uh, Soviet units that are standing in our way. Then we're going to get up here and make sure we attack Connus with infantry troops. I see people attack Connus all the time with motorized troops, which makes no sense. You're paying way too many penalties to ever attack urban into any, a town, urban, otherwise, with motorized. Just don't do it. I mean, even on turn one, it, you don't need to do it. You can get plenty of infantry here. Then... What we're going to do is we're going to be taking uh, these Panzer Corps here uh, of the 3rd Panzer Group. They're in Army Group Center, of course. They're going to be taking Vilnius and all the way down here to the hex in front of Minsk. All right. Uh, but I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Next time, we'll be doing the 16th Army, moving it out here and forming more of this pocket. Now what I do generally is I have the 18th cross at Riga and come north. Now people can play this different ways. Uh, I have the entire, for the most part, 18th army come to the west of the Pepys River, uh, the Pesca, or the Pepys Lake, or Lake Pepys. Uh, I have them come to the west of that and this way, and then I have the 16th come to Peskov and turn north. Uh, one thing, and one thing I did uh, before, is I turned this free agent unit pink, uh, so it's part of the 16th now. Usually this is white when you start the game, these units right here. They're, they're attached to Army Group North, but they don't have um, an army designation. They're attached to the army group. Uh, and so a lot of people kind of don't really know what to do with them. I bring them, they're the southern kind of bit of my 16th army, and they're the ones that I use to defend these railroads and everything out here to Veli Luki, uh, because the Soviets do start to counterattack along this rail from Novgorod once you get out here. Uh, so I keep I keep that unit. You can leave them white if you want, but I like to have them part of the 16th Army to have that logistic support close. And then I have them come out here near Velo Luki. And then I have some of the other 16th string along here from Peskov to Novgorod. Uh, and then you have the decision to make, like, what, who exactly are you going to have take Leningrad? Now, I see so many people bring their motorized units right up here. What's the point? You're never going to take Leningrad with your motorized units. Um, I have them continue on, and they're the ones that cut off the supply across uh, Lake Ladoga. So we'll, we'll get into that. There's plenty more to happen, plenty more things uh, <laughs> that will happen. Uh, but we're off to a great start. We've got the 18th Army moving. Uh, they've done as much as could be asked for on turn one. Oh, before we go, though, let's look at uh, where the losses stand, how many losses we racked up here, and how many uh, the Soviets have racked up. And as you can see, we have lost uh, 1,000 men and 27 guns, okay? 771 of those killed, all right? Uh, and 283 men disabled. Okay, so we lost a thousand men. The Soviets so far, with just the uh, 18th, or uh, just facing the 18th Army, have lost 37,000 men, 786 guns, 266 armored fighting vehicles, uh, and these SP and a ACs 101. Uh, we've, you know, we've only killed. I say only. I know that sounds insensitive. We've killed 1,400 men. We have captured 32,000 and disabled 3,000. Uh, we've captured uh, 201 enemy vehicles, and we have lost 13 vehicles of our own. But everything going pretty well. Uh, the air losses, we bagged another 100 Soviet aircraft just from them running interdiction missions or trying to support their ground troops. We've gotten another 100. By the time we get all the way down the front, this will be up to that 37 to 4,000 range, right in that range. Uh, and so, you know, us not doing all kinds of intricate dances back here with our air bases really won't made it, have made much of a difference. But anyway, 
damn, this is a lot of fun. I just love playing this game to begin with, and to get to do it with all of you is even better. I will see all of you guys next time. Thank you so much for joining me. This has been